Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking about the proper method of seating and removal of impression trays from patient's mouth. You know, every dental practitioner wants the restoration to fit exactly and be inserted into patient's mouth without any further corrections. And impression making is really an important step for obtaining a perfect restoration. We can expect a precise fitting of the lab-made restoration only if the model matches the original situation in patient's mouth, which in turn is possible only with a precise impression. Although there is a plethora of factors influencing the impression making technique, but in this video I will be discussing about the seating and removal of the tray, the impression tray from patient's mouth. So yeah, if you want to gain some quick information about this topic then continue watching this video. Firstly, I would like to tell you about two important clinical parameters which affect the impression making. So first is the periodontal status and oral hygiene of uh, the patient and second is the waiting period between the tooth preparation and impression making. The periodontal and oral hygiene status of uh, the patient significantly affects the result of an impression. Inflamed periodontium and the caries are connected to poor oral hygiene of the patient and inevitably result in circular bleeding during impression making. And this further results in uh, inadequate reproduction of uh, the preparation margins. That means the preparation margins are inadequately reproduced in such situation and result in um, ill-fitting restorations. Another commonly underrated parameter is the waiting period between the preparation and impression making, which in fact is really important for the success of an impression. Whenever injury to marginal periodontium occurs during tooth preparation, the periodontium should be allowed to heal completely before impression making. So now I'll tell you about the positioning of the patient and position of the clinician of course. So either the patient is positioned in an upright position or in a supine position. If the patient is upright then the clinician has to stand in front of the patient for the lower arc and behind the patient for upper arc and if the patient position is supine then the clinician should be seated behind the patient for both the arcs. Just make sure that the chair is in correct position for the clinician to prevent straining or overreaching. So after loading the tray correctly without overfilling it next thing is the proper insertion of uh, the impression tray so when inserting the filled tray into patient's mouth at first one end of the tray is inserted as shown in this picture as you can see in this picture that at first one end of the tray is being inserted into patient's mouth and then the other cheek is pulled out of way using the tray itself. As you can see that uh, the other cheek is being pulled out of way using the tray itself and the tray is completely inserted and uh, positioned with a rotating movement. Seat the impression in patient's mouth making sure that uh, the tray should be aligned parallel to the occlusal plane. Now the reason for the tray being parallel to the occlusal plane is that uh, we want the vertical seating of the tray and also make sure that uh, the frenum should be centered with respect to the notch of the tray for perfect midline alignment. So in case if it's an alginate impression you need to take care that uh, the placement of the tray in the patient mouth should be such that uh, seating the distal part of the tray first and mesial last and the reason for seating distally first and mesial last is that this would force all the extra alginate to the front and out of the tray rather than down the patient's uh, throat still holding the tray in place look in 
uh, the patient's mouth and ensure that no alginate is running down into patient's um, throat area if needed use a mouth mirror to remove the excess and ensure that the tray is fully seated into the sulcus and not traumatic to the soft tissues you just need to make sure that uh, your patient is relaxed and tilt the head downwards of the patient and ask him to breathe through the nose as the material is setting up and uh, a saliva ejector or a patient napkin should be in place to catch any excess saliva while the alginate is setting up and uh, hold the tray passively in place without exerting pressure until the material is set so after the alginate has set place one of your index fingers along the lateral border of uh, the tray and press down for the upper impression or up for uh, the lower impression in order to break the seal which is formed by the set material and once the seal is broken carefully remove the tray from uh, patient's mouth that is gently pull the tray straight down for upper impression or up for uh, lower impression away from the teeth and in case if it is a uh, previous impression then you need to take care that uh, the tray should be seated slowly and evenly and not from posterior to anterior as we did for the alginate materials so the reason for a slow and symmetrical seating for uh, the previous impressions is that this would allow any trapped air bubbles in the previous material to release or escape Although the removal of impression from patient's mouth seems to be an uncomplicated task but improper removal of impression from patient's mouth can result in permanent deformation of the impression material so it's very important that uh, you should remember always remove the impression along the long axis of uh, the prepared tooth and a permanent deformation of uh, the impression at the prepared tooth can only be avoided if the impression is removed in the direction of uh, tooth axis of uh, the prepared tooth but the thing is that the tooth axis on both the sides of the arc are not parallel So we can see in this uh, diagram that the tooth axis for upper arc is diverging and the tooth axis for lower arc is converging as you can see here hence the removal of uh, full arc impression trays depends on localization and number of prepared teeth So firstly I'll tell you about uh, the removal of impression from uh, the upper arc. So the impressions of uh, prepared teeth in upper posterior area are first loosened at uh, opposite side of the arc. You'll understand this better with the help of a picture. So here you can see that the impression of uh, upper arc is being taken and your left side indicates the prepared tooth and your right side indicates the unprepared tooth. and the arrow it indicates that uh, the impression tray should first be loosened at the opposite side of the arc that means on the side of the unprepared tooth that should be first loosened for the upper arc and let me tell you about uh, the removal of uh, mandibular impressions as well so for the impressions of prepared teeth in lower arc they are first loosened at the side of uh, prepared teeth and uh, I'll explain it better with the help of uh, this picture. So we can see in this picture that for removal of mandibular impressions, the impression of uh, prepared tooth in the lower arc is first loosened at the side of prepared tooth and not at the side of uh, the unprepared tooth. And here is a little bonus information for you at the end. Uh, what to do for removal of an impression with the preparation on both the sides of the arc? Now deformation of the impression material around the preparations is inevitable especially in such a case so what you can do is carefully choose the impression tray which should be large enough around the undercut areas so that's it for today's video i hope you found it helpful 
and do let me know in the comment section below that uh, what topics would you like to see in the upcoming videos and uh, i'll see you soon in my next video till then video do hit that like button and uh, share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge make sure that you are subscribed to this channel dentistified if you haven't already and hit that bell icon which is next to the subscribe button so that you get each time i upload a new video so that's it for today uh, see you in my next one